Reverend Brock, would you come up and help me? I'll grab the wireless mic and sing along up here. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is a fun song. I actually, it, I, yeah, yeah, this. Is. Possibility. I am a promise with a capital P. I am a great big bundle of potentiality. That's it. And I'm a learning to hear God's voice. And I'm a trying to make the right choice. I'm a promise to be anything God wants me to be. Let's do it again from the top. I am a promise. I am a possibility, I am a promise, with a capital P. I am a great big bundle of potentiality. He's got the notes, and I have learned it. <laughs> to hear God's voice, and I'm a trying to make the right choice. I promise to be anything wants me to be. And here's our middle part. Can go anywhere Spirit wants me to go. I can be anything that I want to be. I can climb the high mountains, I can cross the white sea. I'm a great big promise you see. Oh, yes. I am a promise. I am a possibility. I am a promise with a capital P. I'm a great big bundle of potentiality and I am learning to hear God's voice and I'm a trying to make the right choice I'm a promise to be anything wants me to be give yourselves a hand we are a promise Thank you, Michael. I love that song. It takes me way back to the 70s. Ah, there was a Unity Church that my mama used to be in, and she was a music director, and we used to sing that with all the kids. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Hi, y'all. Hi, Zoom. Hi, everybody. Good morning. So how are each of you today? Good? Great? getting better. Well, let me tell you how I'm doing today. I am grateful to be alive today. I am blessed to be standing here before you, and I'm excited about everything that's in store for today. <sighs> that's how I'm feeling, and I'm excited, you can tell. I, um, I am. That's what I want to go back to. I am the two most powerful words any of us will ever speak in our lifetime. That's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. But first, a little history. In most traditions, the term God refers to creator, source, spirit, or universe. Those are the most frequent things that we know, common things that we know. In the Old Testament, Moses stands at the mount, on the mountain with the burning bush and asks, Who am I to tell them sent me? What is God's name? And he hears, I am that I am, <laughs> if you remember the movie. But I am that I am. And those are powerful words indeed, right? 
So now on to the lesson. I'm going to reference my message from last week when I talked about intention just a little bit today. I spoke about how when we focus our eyes and our thoughts and our energy where we want and where we want to go and what we want, we are declaring our intentions. Remember I talked about that? Thank you. So when we focus on what or where we want to be, we're creating that path and steering ourselves, remember the motorcycle, towards that destination. Even if we don't deliberately set our intention, y'all, we still find ourselves on a path that lead us to whatever we're thinking about, what we believe and focus on, and what we believe deep down in our hearts and our soul. So often we find ourselves in unwanted circumstances or at a place in our lives that we really didn't want to be. And we say things like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't do that on purpose. How did that happen? Well, the truth is we find ourselves in that uncomfortable position because we didn't set our intentions consciously. We let the noise of life around us influence us. And perhaps we acted out of fear or anger or a sense of scarcity. Whether it's deliberate or not, the intentions we set for ourselves will determine the path that we're on and going forward. We can choose this mindfully, or we can just simply be carried along with the currents of our unconscious mind and let that create whatever it wants to create without our input. And that's how, spiritually speaking, in our everyday lives, we get from point A to point B, so to speak. And that's where I'm headed with this. So intention is about setting our goals and using our spirit-given power to clear the path and navigate to those goals. Those two very powerful words, I am, oh my goodness, y'all. This is like the mother of superpowers. And it's the power that, guess what? Each and every one of you have. Each and every one of us in the world has. So I think of I am as the companion of intention, the essential companion of intention. If intention is the path to our goals, I am is the way we travel on that road. I am is how we conduct ourselves, making the journey to our intentions as enlightening, as positive, and as fulfilling as the destination itself. Simply put, intention is how we have power over our destiny. I am is how we have power right now here in the present moment. So I ask you, how often have you said to yourself, I'm so tired, I'm in a bad mood, or I'm just not feeling very attractive today? It's human nature, y'all, right? So I'm willing to guess that whenever you said these things to yourself, you didn't immediately feel more energy your mood didn't suddenly improve, or you didn't think, oh, I'm looking great now. In fact, I'm willing to guess you probably felt a little bit worse, more tired, and probably less attractive. And this is because when we speak, <clears throat> Michael, I wasn't with you last night, <clears throat> but when we speak, <clears throat> excuse me, we claim whatever we are saying. Whatever we put out into the universe is how we are actively shaping our world in every single second and moment. We grow the feelings and ideas we have just verbalized the same way a little sunlight and water will grow either a weed or a beautiful flower. Think about that. We grow the feelings and ideas we have just verbalized the same way a little sunlight will grow either a weed or a beautiful flower. This is one of the great spiritual truths of our lives, I believe. But of course, it's easy to get distracted by all the noise and the curveballs that get thrown our way. We forget that we can shape our experience, y'all, just by shifting our perspective. A couple of years ago, I was reading the book, The Power of I Am by Pastor Joel Osteen, in which he says, when we speak, whatever follows I am comes looking for us. That's his way of expressing the concept that we get what we declare for ourselves. And it's a really catchy phrase. I like it. And I like reading his books. I applaud and encourage anyone that's on a path, whatever that path may be for them, that works for them, 
and brings them closer to spirit. But I respectfully have a different belief than what Pastor Joel has. You see, many pastors teach the philosophy that we are magnets, that we're attracting what we want. We've all heard that. And so to me, that's a little passive. So what I believe is what unity teaches us is that we are actively creating and shaping our lives. We're not passively sitting, putting a word out there and hoping that it comes to us. We are creating, we are creators right now, right here in this moment. We're not merely the creations of God, y'all. We are the embodiment of divine. Spirit lives and thrives in each and every one of us. It exists in every molecule on this planet and in this universe. Spirit grants us the authority to shape our lives and our destiny simply by giving us the opportunity to live here, right now, in the presence. That power and the God presence is right here, right now, inside of us. We can access it at any second we choose to. Therefore, we don't simply attract what we want. We create it. We create it. And as we move closer to achieving the Christ mind, we allow ourselves the authority and the agency to create whatever life we choose. Did you ever think about maybe you have the authority to choose whatever life you want? Did you actually think that word authority before? I didn't really a lot until I started writing this. But guess what? We have that authority, y'all. So I want you to do something with me. I want you to say this with me and say it to yourself. I'm going to say it first, but say it with authority. So I'm going to be like Moses. By the power vested in me, my universe, by God, I am. By the power vested in me, by the universe, by God, I am. Fill in that blank for yourself. I am what? And if you want, shout it out. I'm in charge. Woohoo! I'm in charge, and I'm glad you're in charge. Anybody else? I'm blessed. I am blessed. Hallelujah. And you are, and we're blessed because of you. Anybody else? Blessed. I'm alive. I'm a, and what I tell my real estate students is I'm alive, excited, and full of energy today. Right? I'm getting excited up here. But anyway... But do you see, if we take that authority, if we stand up there like Moses and say, I have the power, I can create, I am creating. See how easy it is for ourselves to create when we use the word I am? So we're already doing it when we say things like, I'm so tired, I'm scared, I'm angry, I'm fat, I'm stupid, I'm lazy. We're creating that in our life. We have affirmed what and who we are by reinforcing what we believe. And what we believe, we've just said that I'm fat, I'm lazy, I'm tired. And yes, we all do it. Each and every one of y'all and I do it. So, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about one of those stories. As I was writing this lesson, actually, I was experiencing a little bit of stress because there are 11 dogs in the house. And they were running all over and knocking everything down and having a good time and barking all over the place. But there were 11 dogs in the house. And I had a lot to do. I had real estate clients to take care of. I had people calling me on the phone asking for help. And Peter was trying to get me to do something, to go out in the backyard and, and mow or something. I'm like, y'all, I'm working on my talk. And about that point, I just sort of came undone. And I just yelled out loud, I'm so stressed out, I'm never going to get anything done. And I did that. And Peter was like, whoa. And he backed up. He said, do you remember the sermon you were just writing? I'm like, I do. And so I realized we all do it. We're all on a path. We're not perfect, you know, yet. But at first, I was a little dismissed by my, at first, I dismissed my negativity as I was just venting. I wasn't really out of spirituality. I'm still in my I am. I'm just venting. But guess what? That venting didn't help me at all. It just made it worse, right? So what I was actually doing was wasting precious time that I could actually be doing what I was supposed to be doing. 
So then it occurred to me, actually it really did in like two seconds, there was nothing new on my plate, y'all, that I hadn't already dealt with before. I dealt with 11 dogs. I dealt with more than 11 dogs in the house. I've been through many circumstances like this, but it was Thursday, and I usually have my talk done, and so I was nervous because I didn't. So the dogs were freaking me out. So I lost it. But in that moment, I realized I am capable. I've been through this before, and I have succeeded, and guess what? I am succeeding right now. So in the future, that's what I said to myself, and it changed everything. And I got back on track, and Peter took all the dogs outside and let me have some quiet time. So in the future, when you find yourself tired and work still left to do like I had, instead of saying I'm exhausted or screaming out like I did, say this, I am looking forward to getting my second wind. Or I'm excited to get this work done. And the next time you make a mistake, instead of saying, I'm so stupid, or I'm so embarrassed, say, I am learning from this, and I am prepared for the next time. And then when you wake up tomorrow, I encourage you to say, I'm grateful to be alive today. I'm grateful for another day on this beautiful planet that I get to experience whatever comes my way. I am seizing this opportunity today. And then I want you to think about the people that you love, the people that you really care about in your life. Tell yourself, I am acknowledging the people I love today. Even if they're not there, they're right here and they're right here and you can picture them. I'm acknowledging Randy today, Candy today. I'm acknowledging the people in my life I love today. Of course, I love all of you but my talk would go really long if I say all of it. This little part is a small start, but it will demonstrate the power you have to set your course of paying attention to what you're saying with I am. I believe that everything that is has come from God in the Big Bang. As the universe shrinks and expands, it uses the same materials from that very first moment, that very first second. And this is how I know and gives me the faith to believe that we are all created from spirit, by spirit, as spirit. We are a deserving and vital part of this universe, no less than the sun and the moon. We're just as important. And remember what I said earlier about our negative thoughts being the sunlight and water that grows weeds? Consider this I am lesson today, your opportunity to decide what kind of garden you want to grow. Do you want to grow beautiful and abundant flowers and vegetables? Or do you want to grow a bunch of thorns and weeds? So now for a moment, I'd like you to expand that vision with me for just a second. Imagine, if you will, you can close your eyes or leave them open, it doesn't matter. But imagine lifting yourself high above that garden I'm talking about, above the ocean, above the mountains and the forests. You're above it all, and you're looking down. And you can now realize and see, embrace and celebrate your oneness with the universe, your oneness with spirit. Consider, just as you had the ability, what I, call, what I called uh, growing weeds, from your negative I am, you have the power to grow and nurture beautiful flowers, abundant fruits and vegetables, lush forests, fertile oceans, and huge mountains, just as spirit does for our planet and universe. We are capable. So all that's required, you got an idea? Is positive, bringing forth positive intentions with affirming I am statements. Positive, affirming intentions with I am statements in your life. Feel them in the depths of your being and lift them to the universe for your highest and best. I am. What are you putting your I am to? 
Let these two words guide you to the place of understanding and connection, freedom and peace, and a life lived to its fullest, knowing that God is all there is. I am that that I am. I am. Say it with me. I am. Again, I am. And so it is, my friends. Blessings. Thank you. I need your help, okay? Thank you. I guess you felt it. As we move into meditation, I'm actually sharing my adaptive version of what's called the transcendence I am. It's a practice of living daily in the I am. It was written by my dear friend, Missy Higginbotham, who's the director of education for the seminary Emerson that I went to. So if you're willing, get comfortable where you are, close your eyes, and take a deep, soothing breath, releasing any thoughts other than being here in this present moment. I am. I am love. I am the frequency of the divine emanating out and touching all with kindness, appreciation, and compassion. My being nurtures all with life-giving energy. I am love. I am truth. I am truth. I am the frequency of God emanating out and touching all with the vibration I radiate only the purity of my God self. I am compassion, the frequency of the divine emanating out and touching all with my love, with my kindness, and with my compassion as I nurture my life-giving energy. I am transcendence. I am the frequency of the divine emanating, knowing and understanding my oneness, my connection, my heart, my soul. 
the universe and with spirit. I am transcendence. I lift. I rise. to go forth from me and into the world, blessing and supporting others. I am transcendence. one more sweet gentle breath as we come back to this place in time knowing that individually and collectively we are one and so it is Amen Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we are what? An, an ocean, ocean of love. love. We have an inspiring vision, an exciting mission, and compelling values by which we strive to live. Please join me in saying them aloud. Our vision is created, it, we co-create a world powerfully transformed through the beauty of the universe, share spiritual awakening. Our mission is we are a creative, joy-filled spiritual community dedicated to healing, inspiring, and transforming the lives of all people through prayer, education, and love. And our values are we are spirit-led, generous with resources, inclusive, joyously creative and guided by integrity. And in this space, feeling so inspired by our vision, mission, and values, and feeling so enriched by what we've experienced here today, let us take time now to be a channel for enrichment through our generous tithes and love offerings. As Michael shares the next beautiful song, please take time to write out a check to USC or if you're on Zoom, to make a donation online, and I'll put that link in the chat in just a moment. If you are here in the sanctuary, our ushers will come forward to take your offering. And practicing the principle of tithing ourselves, as a spiritual community, we are pleased to tithe 10% of the offering collected every Sunday to various unity organizations and local nonprofits serving our city. So let us now take a moment to bless our tithes and love offerings as we cup them in our hands or next to our hearts. Let us say our offering blessing, which is on your screen. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. It all stops here. It all starts here. It only takes a moment to admit it. There is no excuse. It's not so difficult. You'll understand. You'll get it. Heal your hurt. Wrap your wound. Calm your anger 
and soothe it. Where love is, it shall remain. No one stole it and no one removed it. Take the moment and soak it in. You may not see that time again. Out loud, I share a smile. Spread some joy that lasts a while. Heal your hurt, wrap your wound, calm your anger. And soothe it for where love is, it shall remain. No one stole it, and no one removed it. For somewhere behind your heart, in the air you breathe, spirit lives on, waiting to be released. What you resist is destined to persist. Spirit lives on, waiting to be. Love yourself and keep it strong. The world will need something to lean on. What you speak must be the truth. You can trust that it will soothe you. Heal your hurt and wrap your wound. Calm your anger and soothe it for where love is it shall remain no one stole it no one removed it somewhere behind your heart in the air you breathe spirit lives on waiting to be released what you resist is destined to persist spirit lives on waiting to be This is not impossible. It happens every day. Let go and let God then get out of the way. Wait. 